and I'm Ed, so once again, open the small part big one. This event is, in my view, one of the most beautiful and vital events in Glebus Valley and in Sheffield as a whole, as it highlights and combats one of the most dark issues of injustice of our time. But it does so in a joyous way, involving the community and linking us in solidarity to people in Palestine. This year's event seems even more crucial than ever, following the election of the most far-right Israeli government in years, some of the ministers of which are openly racist and described as fascist even by the Israeli newspaper Haaretz. There has been an increase in settlement expansion, backed by the full force of the government, and against the backdrop of an intensification of the media campaign against Palestine solidarity. The focus of this year's event is Israeli apartheid. In February 2022, Amnesty International released a report in which it recognized the regime in Israel for what it has always been. The report was entitled, Israel's Apartheid Against Palestinians, Cruel System of Domination and Crime Against Humanity, and I would encourage everyone to read it. The report found that a system of apartheid defined as an institutional regime of systematic oppression and domination by one racial group over another racial group, extends from inside the borders of the Israeli state established in 1948 to all the occupied territories and also outwardly through Israel's discriminatory law of return and the denial of the right to return to Palestinian refugees and their descendants. This has been confirmed many times by the pronouncements of Israel's leaders. For example, in 2019, Israeli PM Netanyahu declared that Israel is not a state of all its citizens, but rather the nation state of the Jewish people and only them. Despite this, speaking the truth about Palestine has become a revolutionary act in the 21st century. Frequently, the media describes how unarmed Palestinians are killed in clashes with Israeli tanks or snipers' bullets. Just last week in The Guardian, there was a particularly egregious example of biased reporting, with a story about the shooting of Palestinian journalist uh, Muammar Sumrin, titled, Palestinian journalist hits in head with bullets. Pink Floyd's popular rock opera, The Wall, recognized for decades as a powerful critique of fascism, is now mischaracterized as the opposite, and lifelong anti-racist campaigners can be ostracized as racist for speaking out on Palestine. In Sheffield, we have seen the council censor a public question referencing Israeli apartheid due to the council's previous adoption of the IHRA's flawed definition of anti-Semitism. And the Palestinian lecturer and refugee was hounded out of her job at Sheffield Hallam, which purports to be a university of sanctuary. So what can we do about this? The answer is to raise our voices louder and to collaborate more to ensure that people rise up against this long-standing oppression. In Sheffield this year, the Sheffield Coalition Against Israeli Apartheid was launched, seeking to emulate Sheffield's contribution to the ending of apartheid in South Africa. I'm pleased to report that since its launch, many individuals and organizations have signed up, including my union branch, Sheffield Unite Not For Profit, and the Sheffield Green Party. Please consider signing up individually and or taking a motion to your union branch, political party, or organization. You can see the Sheffield Palestine Solidarity Campaign website for details or ask one of the organizers of this event about this. This year's Small Park Big Run also focuses on the ecological impacts of the occupation. Many here will be aware of Israel's land grabs, the separation wall, and the continual demolitions of houses and entire villages. But what is less well known is the impact of water apartheid, with Palestinians forced to pay for water to be delivered to fill their rooftop water tanks, to have to go to buy it in tankers for their farms, and to have to pay, to, to pay for drink and bottled water whilst the water of the land is piped to his illegal Israeli settlements for their domestic use and, and to be used for industrial agriculture, production and upkeep of golf courses. Some may also be unaware that untreated sewage and rubbish is often dumped by settlers to contaminate Palestinian farmland or of the deliberate burning of Palestinian olive groves by settlers. 
Please join us at 3 p.m. outside Mesbrook Hall for a tree planting and a talk on climate justice by Palestinian activist and academic Mahmoud Tohari. Please also join the Big Sang at midday on Sunday, which will bring together six Sheffield choirs for a rendition of You'll Never Walk Alone, which will be live streamed to Palestine. Thanks again for all the hard work of the many organizers and contributors, and of course, everyone taking part in today's event.